Today, we're diving into the intriguing real estate landscape for the summer of 2023. It's been quite an unusual season, characterized by unexpected trends that have left many scratching their heads. So let's break down the numbers and understand why this summer has felt like a housing market cold front. Hi, it's Brooks and Chris from Mar with MMG Real Estate Advisors, your local Orange County Realtors. And we are back with another market update for August of 2023. The summer of 2023, has witnessed a unique blend of factors contributing to a rather chilly housing market. Low inventory, unwilling sellers, sluggish demand, and a reduced number of closed sales have combined to create a market landscape that is far from the norm. Many of you might be wondering, when will this cold front pass? When will homeowners start selling? And when will demand and closed sales pick up again? The answer might not be as straightforward as it seems. Based on market data from Freddie Mac's primary mortgage market survey, mortgage rates have increased to 6.9% as of August 10th, while other surveys show mortgage rates above 7%, with zero discount points paid by borrowers. A discount point or points in effect reduce the rate. This increase has led to a hesitancy amongst homeowners, especially since 87% of Californians with mortgages are currently enjoying fixed rates at or below 5%. 69% have fixed rates at or below 4%, and 30% have fixed rates at or below 3%. The reluctance to sell is reflected in the numbers. Only 14,519 sellers entered the market through July, a significant decrease from 2022 with 21,444. That's a 47% drop. Just remember, interest rates were significantly lower in the first and second quarters of 2022 before doubling to 7% in the last quarter of 2022 and top 7% again in recent months. The FMOC has raised the Fed funds rate 11 times since March of 2022. An economist for Morningstar wrote, the Fed has engineered a massive increase in interest rates in order to combat high inflation. We expect it to cut the federal funds rate aggressively in the coming years, driving the federal funds rate from the 5% range currently to below 2% by 2025 just like the unusual weather conditions experienced in California this year with the unexpected cold temperatures and thick marine layers, the housing market is shrouded in its own fog. Despite rising home values and quick sales, it seems like the market is stuck. The higher mortgage rates have played a significant role in this impacting various real estate metrics and creating a distinctively cool summer compared to the normal market conditions before the pandemic. One might assume that demand would be most affected, but surprisingly, it's supply of available homes that has taken the biggest hit. As the summer market comes to a close, we want buyers and sellers to consider a few things that we think about. Number one, schools are starting soon and those buyers on the fence will have another reason to wait leading to decreased demand. Number two, after summer, demand typically drops lower. And last year we saw a drop of 34%. Normally, the typical drop in demand is just over 20%. Now Brooks, what's happening in the listing inventory? Over the past two weeks, the active listing inventory has grown by 86 homes, marking a 4% increase, bringing the current total to 2,475 homes, the highest since January. However, this level has not yet surpassed the initial inventory at the beginning of the year. Notably, this is the lowest starting August inventory since tracking started in 2004. Typically, inventory peaks from mid-July to late August, suggesting that this year's peak is likely to occur within the coming weeks. Last year, the peak was observed in early August. A potential delay to September could be beneficial for the housing market, leading to more homes available for the start of 2024. If this year's peak is reached the current month, next year's starting inventory could hit a record low level. Comparatively, last year's inventory was notably higher at 4,069 homes, representing a 64% increase of 1,594 homes. Looking back to the three-year average before the pandemic, 2017 to 2019, which stood at 6,753 homes, there were an additional 
4,278 homes, an impressive 173% increase, nearly three times the current level. As soon as this peak is reached, the inventory is anticipated to gradually decline through mid-November and experience a more significant drop from the Thanksgiving to the new year. In the past few weeks, demand representing new pending sales over the previous month saw a decrease from 1,598 to 1,580, marking a decline of 18 pending sales, equivalent to a 1% drop. Demand remains subdued and relatively stable, with pending sales expected to stay muted as long as mortgage rates remain high. The current elevated mortgage rate environment, hovering just below 7%, combined with a reluctance among homeowners to sell, contributes to this lower demand. While some argue that today's rates are being overly emphasized, historical context shows that affordability isn't solely determined by race. It also takes into account incomes and home values. Given the present conditions of home values, incomes, and mortgage rates, it's challenging to find a period when affordability was worse. Any change in prevailing rates is likely to be tied to a slowdown in the U.S. economy. Now looking back, demand last year stood at 1,812, which is at 15% higher than the current figure, reflecting an additional 232 pending sales. Comparatively, the three-year average before the pandemic, 2017 to 2019, was 2,630 pending sales, a considerable 66% higher than the present level, translating to an extra 1,050 pending sales. Moving forward, expect a gradual decline in demand through mid-November, with a more pronounced drop during the holiday season, spanning from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day. As supply increases and demand decreases, the expected market time indicating the number of days needed to sell all listings in Orange County at the current buying rate has risen from 45 to 47 days in recent weeks. Comparatively, last year's expected market time was 67 days, notably slower than the current pace. Looking back even further, the three-year average before the pandemic was 78 days, significantly longer than the present time frame. This suggests a relatively more favorable market condition in terms of selling speed compared to both the previous year and the pre-COVID average. In recent weeks, the luxury housing market, homes priced above $2 million, experienced changes. The inventory decreased from 815 to 793 homes, a decrease of 22 homes or 3%. However, luxury demand with 17 more pending sales marked a 9% rise, reaching 216, its highest since June. This shift led to a reduction in the expected market time for luxury homes, dropping significantly from 123 to 110 days, its strongest level we've seen since June. Despite these improvements, the luxury segment remains slower compared to lower price ranges, emphasizing the importance of careful pricing strategies for success. Comparing year over year, luxury demand has grown by 15 pending sales or 7%. Comparing year over year, luxury demand has grown by 15 pending sales or 7%, while the active luxury listing inventory has decreased by 44 homes or 5%. Last year's expected market time for luxury homes was 125 days, indicating a slower pace than the current market conditions. Furthermore, with specific price brackets, homes priced between $2 million and $4 million saw so the expected market time decrease from 83 to 76 days for the past two weeks. For homes priced between $4 million and $6 million, the expected market time decreased from 253 to 152 days. And for homes priced above $6 million, it went down from 297 to 291 days. With this last figure, a seller in this price range could expect their home to enter escrow around May of 2024. Hey, so there you have it. A detailed breakdown on the housing market's cool summer of 2023. The low housing inventory, unwilling sellers, sluggish demand, and fewer closed sales, all painting a unique picture of the real estate landscape. As we look ahead, we'll keep a close eye on how mortgage rates, supply, and demand evolve, hoping for a warmer market in the near future. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all things housing market related. See you on the next one.